All right, so we're going to talk about lists today. And to understand what a list is, I'll go through like an example of what you might see in math class, how it differs in computer science. But the first thing I need to tell you is that lists in Java are called arrays. They're called arrays. And on this board here are all the array topics we need to cover between now and the end of January. Uh, and today, believe it or not, I'm going to go through one, two, three, and part of four. The, the rest of four will take like two to three weeks to cover, and then uh, arrays of objects will be one full class, and heterogeneous arrays will probably be one full class. I, I may put off the heterogeneous arrays until unit nine, I haven't decided, but that's basically where we are. So today we're doing more of the simple stuff and just kind of starting algorithms with loops after lunch, and that, that's where the bulk of our time is gonna be spent on combining lists with loops. Lists and loops are a powerful combination. You have a list of things and you go through them in a loop one at a time and you do stuff with it. So let's take a math example first. Let's say that I had a number line over here. And let's say that for some reason we, maybe we ran some sort of science experiment or something and we gathered a bunch of points here. And uh, I'll just make up some values here. Maybe this is the number uh, 12.3, and maybe this is like uh, 17.4, and maybe this is uh, 56.2, maybe this is 80.3, and this maybe this is like 90.7. I just made those up. And so <clears throat> let's say we have we we, ran, we have a number line. We ran an experiment. We got these data, and your math teacher wants to refer to these points generically using some sort of list. So sh she may say, for example, that we're going to number the list and we're going to refer to this as x sub 0. This will be x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and x sub 4, like that. Okay. So let's, let's look at this for an example, x sub 0. And we're going to say that's going to be equal to the 12.3. That's this point right over here. You notice that I'm using this subscript zero, and in math, as is also true in computer science, at least most, most languages in computer science, our numbering of the list, or in this case, we call it an array in Java, is gonna start at zero, not at one. And you notice that in math, at least, they use this little subscript notation, so make it a little bit smaller to the right and to the bottom. And so if I was gonna say, okay, what is the, you know, item number three, you would say, well, x sub three is 80.3, like that. Now, for us to write it like this in computer science is difficult because in order to get this subscript, we have to go on the keyboard and get a special symbol, right? All that stuff. So we don't usually write it like this in computer science. We're gonna write it like this. But I need you to understand that these two things basically mean the same thing, okay? And the other thing, as I mentioned, is that the numbering starts at zero. So that's basically how we deal with the list. If I was going to describe this list in computer science, I could describe it like this. I could say I have a list of decimal numbers. Okay. So one of the other things I should mention to you that in Java, the word array or array, these are not reserved words in Java. The only way to tell that something is an array is this array symbol right here, which is open uh, square brackets and close square brackets. And so here, if I was gonna describe an array of decimal numbers, I would go like this and I have to give it a name. Maybe I could call it uh, points or something like that. That's just a variable name, right? And then if I wanted to store these numbers, I have two different ways of creating an array. I'm gonna show you the shortcut way right now. I can just go like this, and I can just go 12.3, 17.4, 56.2, 80.3, and 90.7. That's the shortcut way, right? Now, let's say I wanted to print the first element. I wanna print the first element. I would like you to right now, take out a piece of paper, or on your computer if you prefer, write a print statement that will print this 12.3. I would like you to, using this array as a, as a uh, 
your array name as a, as a starting point. Okay, so let's try to figure out how would you print this number right here. Mr. Borden, sir, I'd like you to help us try to print this 12.3. So why don't we get started? What's the first thing I'm gonna to do to try to print something? System.out.print. Okay, so I'm gonna do system out print. And now inside here, sir, what should I put? Points and then the bracket and then the index. What would the index here be for this first element? Zero. Okay, like that. And the way I'm gonna read this is I'm gonna call this points sub zero, just like your math teacher did. Okay. So now you can see that I'm printing the, the first element. How would I print the last element? Please discuss with the person next to you now. Miss Caitlin, how would I print the last element? Okay, so this would print the last element. Now, you agree if I was to add another point to this array at some point, then uh, four would not be the last element in the array anymore. You agree that with that, right? Wouldn't be the last index. So. We may want a more generic way of printing the last element. Like always say, okay, print the last one. How would we do that? Well, let me take a step back. Let's say we had a string, right? So if we had a string S equals, and let's say there was some stuff in here, I didn't know what was in here. And I wanted to ask the string, how many characters do you have or how long are you? Who remembers how to do that, Mr. Pandali? How do we do that? Hold on one second, sir. I'm gonna put here int len. And we're going to store the length of that string in this variable. So what would I put on this side, sir? Uh, s dot okay, s dot length. And do you remember what we used to put after length? Two parentheses. parentheses, because length was a method call, right, on the string. So here I'm asking the string, how long are you? I can do something similar here, except instead of doing points dot length, with parentheses, it turns out that for an array, the length is actually a property of the array. It's a, a variable, it's a read-only variable, so I don't use the parentheses. This is kind of an unfortunate artifact of historical Java that you're gonna to have to live with, that the string lengths have a parentheses and the array lengths do not. This piece of minutia, unfortunately, is also heavily tested on the AP exam and if you write the string one without the parentheses, which is wrong, or you write the array one with the parentheses, there's a major penalty on the AP exam for doing so because they think that you're mixing up the arrays and the strings. It gets especially confusing later when we talk about arrays of strings, but we'll get to that another day. So the point being now is that if I want to ask an array, how many elements do you have? I would use this expression. And if I was to store this uh, in some sort of variable like this, for this array, what would n be? And if you're not sure, ask yourself, how many elements are in the array? It's not four, Mr. Sneed. It's five, you see? We're back to counting like a human now. One, two, three, four, five. There are five elements in the array. So now, I want you to turn to your partner one more time and ask them, what would be a more abstract, abstract expression putting over here that would allow me to always print the last element of the array if I didn't know how big the array was? I just had points on Miss uh, Ariam. I want to print the last element of the array, but I don't know how big the array is. So what should I put over here? Okay, so I would put here points dot length minus one. If the array has five elements in it here, the last valid index is four. So that minus one is important. What do you think will happen if I try, if I don't put the minus one here and I try to access the element that's after this, what do you think will happen, Mr. Snead? I'll get an out of bounds error, array index out of bounds error. And you'll be getting a lot of those over the next couple of weeks until you get used to it. So we've now discussed 
how to create an array using a shortcut. We've discussed how to ask the array, how long are you? Now I'm going to show you a more standard way of, initial, of creating an array, declaring it, and initializing it. So to do that, I'm going to leave this here for comparison purposes, but let me just show you the other way. So no one has raised their hand or mentioned anything, but something about creating an array object out of this should be bothering you. What did I not use here, which I said is almost always used to create new objects in Java? Yes, sir. New. I didn't use the keyword new. What was the only other example we've seen so far this year where I can create an object of a class without using the keyword new? Who remembers? Mr. Borden? A string. It was a string. Remember up here I had string s equals something? And there was another example of a case where I can create an object without using the keyword new. So here is your second exception to the rule now. I can create an array without using the keyword new. So now uh, I'm going to, here, let me do it this way. So this is me declaring the array. I'm telling the compiler, hey, I'm going to have an array of decimal numbers. It's going to be called points. At this point, the compiler says OK, but the compiler doesn't know how big the array is going to be, so it hasn't initialized it with anything. It just knows that there's going to be one. Then later on, I could come along and say points equals new double. And then I could put in here some number like 10. And what this does is it creates the array. It allocates memory. You know it allocates memory because of this keyword here, new. Its job is to allocate memory. And what's happening here, and this is kind of important, is that this memory is being allocated contiguously. Mr. Garofalo, what does contiguously mean? It means that the memory for these 10 decimal numbers are all side by side next to each other in memory. So if I took like uh, some piece of hardware that could let me see into the memory of the machine, you would see that there is space allocated for 10 of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 of these decimal numbers all next to each other starting at this location, which is called points. Like that. It's literally next to each other. Now, having it be next to each other has one huge advantage and one huge disadvantage, and that's what I'm going to talk about next. The reason why people like arrays so much in Java is that arrays have a special property called random access. 